You've probably heard the saying, six packs are made in the kitchen, not the gym. Well, if one of your New Year's resolutions is to get fit, maybe get yourself a six pack, your first move should include a trip to the grocery store. Here to help us make some healthy decisions as we tackle the aisles, we have lifestyle strategist John Rowley here with us. John, thanks so much for being thanks here. Thanks for having me. I appreciate so, it. So, you have to go in with a game plan. What? What's the strategy before you even walk through the door of well, the grocery know, store? Know what you're going to get. So having a list is important. Going there not being hungry is, for me, extremely important because I'll eat everything before I even check out. So go, knowing what you want to get, being prepared is probably the most critical thing you could do. Is there a better time of day or week to do your grocery shopping? I guess it depends on who you are, but as long as you're not hungry, as long as you're prepared and you can go in there, be efficient, get in, get out and go, you're good. Now, of course, around this time of year, people talk about working out, buddy system is one of the things that keeps coming up. Work out with somebody, you'll stay motivated. Can shopping work the same way? Is it a good idea to go shopping with a buddy that might keep you in check? As long as, yeah, as, long as it's a buddy who's not going to bring you to the cookie aisle. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> I might not be the best buddy to go shopping with. And um, I know we talked a little bit about shopping on an empty stomach. Some people say if you do go shopping on an empty stomach, even if you're not going to eat it while you're there, you might be that much more tempted to buy in bulk, maybe overindulge just in the way that you shop, but then you eat those things once you get them at home. Well, as soon as you get to the car. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, do you want to try to have a snack before you go grocery shopping? How do you try to eat, get around yeah, that? Yeah, definitely eat before you go grocery really? shopping. I have a meal before I go. So if I'm going to do grocery shopping, I make sure I eat well before I go there. Because if I eat, I'm hungry when I get there, I'll spend $300 versus 100 And then once you get into the supermarket, is there a strategy to try to dodge those unhealthy things you might be tempted to buy? I like two different strategies. One is shop the, out the perimeter of the store. Because, you know, fruits, vegetables, proteins, all that is typically in the perimeter of most grocery stores. Right, as opposed to the processed things, which are in the center in of the Usually. Exactly. And the second is a good idea, which I just learned this recently, is taking your shopping cart, using the large section of your shopping cart for all the healthy foods, your protein, fruits, vegetables, things like that. And then with the child cities, use that for the things that would maybe be snacks. So this way you can only fit a certain amount in there. Maybe the little section where the kids are supposed exactly. to sit, that yeah, kind of a thing. Exactly. And then are there any foods that you recommend people just point blank stay away from? You know, it's no. Because when you when people are limited, they're not going to want it. They're not going to want to stick to it. Okay. So eat what you want, but eat it. Eat it. Have a plan. And when you look when you look at these here, mm -hmm. um, just this sports drink is about the same amount of carbohydrates as everything that's over there. Wow. Well, okay. So you need to, you need to know what you're putting in your body. So you can't you can have a sports drink and you can have your chips or whatever else, but you have to understand what it's going to do to your body. Just be aware of the way your body is responding. Maybe balance it out with some other choices. If you indulge in one area, you can make up for it somewhere else. Exactly. If you're having something that's very high in sugar and then you have something that has fiber or fat, it will slow down the absorption of the sugar in your body, which will stop your insulin from rising, which will help your body not store fat. And then, I mean, some of this can be difficult because not everybody knows the way the body works and knows what's good for them or not. So, I mean, are there certain buzzwords or things on the label that people should look out for that might be deceiving, makes you think you're eating something healthy when you're not? Everything. <laughs> Everything on, you know, because they have 500 different names for sugar, right. 75 different names for unhealthy fats. You got to be really cognizant and know what you're looking at when you go shopping. The simplest way to eat is to eat all the good, clean protein that you want. Eat all the vegetables that you want and be cautious of everything else. But I know for sugars, a lot of times it's the roast. It's the sucrose and all those, those kind of words that you want to look out for, right? Oh, yeah, sucrose, fructose, you know, and, and it goes on. There's so many different names that you couldn't even relate to sugar, but they are sugar. Right. And they're, you know, they're designed, they're, they're given those names to fool us anyway. So you try to eat something that has the fewest ingredients possible. That's exactly. kind of its most natural form. Yes, the f fewest ingredients and the purest kind of food that you can get. All right, John, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for really having me. I appreciate talking to you.